Hi, my name's Nikki, and this is a video on the Gale Shapley algorithm for stable matching. In this video, we will see the problem the algorithm attempts to solve, an explanation of the algorithm, an example of the algorithm in use, and the complexity of the algorithm. The algorithm is used when there are two sets of elements which need to be matched and each element has a set of preferences for its matching. For example, when assigning children to a secondary school, each child gives a preference list of where they would like to go and each school would have a preference of the children they would like to admit. The algorithm aims to find the best matching possible to ensure that there are no two elements, one from each set, which will prefer to be matched together rather than matched to the elements they are currently with. So continuing with the previous example, there would be no child who preferred to go to a different school and that school also preferred to admit the child. If there are no cases of this, it is a stable match. Using this algorithm ensures that every element in each set is matched to an element in the other and that the matching is stable. So no child will be without a school and no school will be less a child. The following explanation continues using the example I have previously mentioned about matching children to schools. Imagine there are five secondary schools within a town. Each school has admitted hundreds of students and only has one place remaining. There is also a list of five children who are yet to be admitted to a school. The children have already made a list of their preferred schools when applying and the schools now do the same for the children. Here are the preference lists. As you can see, each school has listed their preference of child from most wanted to least, and each child has done the same for schools. If we put this into tables, it becomes a lot easier to see. Now that we have them in tables, we can start the algorithm. We start off by looking at the first school's preference. We see that world's preferred student is Tom. We highlight these blue so we know what we are currently looking at. We then look at Tom and find that he has not yet been matched with a school. We therefore match Tom to Well and show this by highlighting the relevant fields red. We then move on to the next school, Priory. Their preferred student is Sophie. So we look at Sophie and find that she's not yet been assigned to a school. We therefore assign her to Priory, and again highlight the fields red. Then we move on to the next school, Wyvern. Wyvern's preferred student is Tom, but Tom is already assigned to Well. So we check Tom's preference list. Does he prefer Wyvern to Well? He does. We therefore unassign Tom from Well and assign him to Wyvern. Now that we have unassigned Tom from Well, Well no longer has a student, so we must go back and assign them another one. We start from the student that we unassigned, Tom, look at the next preference, Ben, and see if he has been assigned a school. Ben hasn't been assigned a school, so we can assign him to Well. We then return to where we were, and move on to the next school, Brodick. Their preferred student is Ben. Ben is already assigned to Well, so we check if he prefers Brodick to Well and find that he doesn't. We therefore check Brodick's next preference, which is Tom. Tom is already assigned to Wyvern, so we check if he prefers Brodick. We find that he doesn't, and so we move on again. Broadoak's next preference is Anna. Anna is not yet assigned a school, so we can assign her to Broadoak. Moving on to the next school, we find that Sidcott's first preference is Sophie. Sophie is already assigned to Priory, so we check if she prefers Sidcott. She doesn't, so we move on to their next preference.
Sidcot's next preference is Tom. Tom is already assigned to Wyvern, so we check if he prefers Sidcot. He doesn't, so again, we move on to their next preference. Their next preference is Anna. Anna is already assigned to Broadoak, but when checking if she prefers Sidcot, we find she does. So we unassign Anna from Broadoak and assign her to Sidcot. Now we must go back and find another student for Broad Oak. Starting with a student after Anna, Broad Oak's next preference is Sophie. Sophie is already assigned to Priory, so we check if she prefers Broad Oak. We find that she doesn't, so we move on. Broad Oak's next preference is Catherine. Catherine is not yet assigned to school, so we assign her to Broad Oak. Now that all the schools are matched to a student, we have finished the algorithm. You can see from the tables that there is no student which prefers a different school, such that that school would also prefer them. For example, Ben is assigned well, but prefers Priory. However, Priory is assigned Sophie and does not prefer Ben. This also works the other way. Well is assigned Ben, but prefers Tom. However, Tom is assigned to Wyvern and does not prefer well. As there are no cases, where there is a student which would prefer a different school and that school would also prefer them, this is a stable match. The complexity of this algorithm is on squared. We can see this from the example. There are five schools, so n equals five. If throughout the algorithm every school is assigned to a child, unassigned, and then reassigned to a new child multiple times such that when the algorithm terminated every school had been assigned to every child, the number of assignments would be 25. This is the maximum number possible and therefore the complexity is on squared. To summarise, we have seen that this algorithm is useful when wanting to match two sets of elements, each element with its own preference list, and result in a matching with the best combination of matches to allow every element their highest preference possible. We have also seen an example of this in use and discussed the complexity of the algorithm.